Today is a talk by the Venerable Mahadi Sayadaw Agamaha Pandita Usabana given to his disciples on their induction into Vipassana meditation at Sasana Yekta Meditation Center, Rangoon, Burma. Practical Vipassana Meditational Exercises The practice of Vipassana, or insight meditation, is the effort made by the meditator to understand correctly the nature of the psychophysical phenomena taking place in his own body. Physical phenomena are the things or objects which one clearly perceives around one. The whole of one's body that one clearly perceives constitutes a group of material qualities, rupa. Psychical or mental phenomena are acts of consciousness or awareness, nama. These nama rupas are clearly perceived to be happening whenever they are seen, heard, smelt, tasted, touched or thought of. We must make ourselves aware of them by observing them and noting thus seeing, seeing, hearing, hearing, smelling, smelling, tasting, tasting, touching, touching, or thinking, thinking. Every time one sees, hears, smells, tastes, touches, or thinks, one should make a note of that fact. But in the beginning of one's practice, one cannot make a note of every one of these happenings. One should therefore begin with noting those happenings which are conspicuous and easily perceivable. With every act of breathing, the abdomen rises and falls, which movement is always evident. This is the material quality known as vayodhatu, the element of motion. One should begin by noting this movement, which may be done by the mind intently observing the abdomen. You will find the abdomen rising when you breathe in and falling when you breathe out. The rising should be noted mentally as rising and the falling as falling. If the movement is not evident by just noting it mentally, keep touching the abdomen with the palm of your hand. Do not alter the manner of your breathing, neither slow it down nor make it faster. Do not breathe too vigorously either. You will tire if you change the manner of your breathing. Breathe steadily as usual and note the rising and falling of the abdomen as they occur. Note it mentally, not verbally. In Vipassana meditation, what you name or say doesn't matter. What really matters is to know or perceive. While noting the rising of the abdomen, do so from the beginning to the end of the movement just as if you are seeing it with your eyes. Do the same with the falling movement. Note the rising movement in such a way that your awareness of it is concurrent with the movement itself. The movement and the mental awareness of it should coincide in the same way as a stone thrown hits the target similarly with the falling movement. Your mind may wander elsewhere 
while you are noting the abdominal movement. This must also be noted by mentally saying, wandering, wandering. When this has been noticed once or twice, the mind stops wandering, in which case you go back to noting the rising and falling of the abdomen. If the mind reaches somewhere, note as reaching, reaching, then go back to the rising and falling of the abdomen. If you imagine meeting somebody, note as meeting, meeting, then back to the rising and falling. If you imagine meeting and talking to somebody, note as talking, talking. In short, whatever thought or reflection occurs should be noted. If you imagine, note as imagining. If you think, thinking. If you plan, planning. If you perceive, perceiving. If you reflect, reflecting. If you feel happy, happy. If you feel bored, bored. If you feel glad, glad. If you feel disheartened, disheartened. Noting all these acts of consciousness is called citta nupassana. Because we fail to note these acts of consciousness, we tend to identify them with a person or individual. We tend to think that it is I who is imagining, thinking, planning, knowing or perceiving. We think there is a person who from childhood onwards has been living and thinking. Actually, no such person exists. There are, instead, only those continuing and successive acts of consciousness. That is why we have to note these acts of consciousness and know them for what they are. That is why we have to note each and every act of consciousness as it arises. When so noted, it tends to disappear. We then go back to noting the rising and falling of the abdomen. When you have sat meditating for long, sensations of stiffness and heat will arise in your body. These are to be noted carefully too. Similarly, with sensations of pain and tiredness, all these sensations are Dukkha Vedana, feeling of unsatisfactoriness, and noting them is Vedana Nupassana. Failure or omission to note these sensations makes you think, I am stiff, I am feeling hot, I am in pain, I was all right a moment ago, now I am uneasy with these unpleasant sensations. The identification of these sensations with the ego is mistaken. There is really no I involved, only a succession of one new unpleasant sensation after another. It is just like a continuous succession of new electrical impulses that light up electric lamps. Every time unpleasant contacts are encountered in the body, unpleasant sensations arise, one after the other. These sensations should be carefully and intently noted, whether they are sensations of stiffness, of heat or of pain. In the beginning of the yogi's meditational practice, these sensations may tend to increase and lead to a desire to change his posture. This desire should be noted, after which the yogi 
should go back to noting the sensations of stiffness, heat, etc. Patience leads to Nibbana, as the saying goes. This saying is most relevant in meditational effort. One must be patient in meditation. If one shifts or changes one's posture too often because one cannot be patient with the sensation of stiffness or heat that arises, samadhi, good concentration, cannot develop. If samadhi cannot develop, insight cannot result and there can be no attainment of magga, the path that leads to nibbana, pala, the fruit of that path, and nibbana. That is why patience is needed in meditation. It is patience mostly with unpleasant sensations in the body, like stiffness, sensations of heat and pain, and other sensations that are hard to bear. One should not immediately give up one's meditation on the appearance of such sensations and change one's meditational posture. One should go on patiently just noting as stiffness, stiffness or hot, hot. Moderate sensations of these kinds will disappear if one goes on noting them patiently. When concentration is good and strong, even intense sensations tend to disappear. One then reverts to noting the rising and falling of the abdomen. One will, of course, have to change one's posture if the sensations do not disappear, even after one has noted them for a long time and if, on the other hand, they become unbearable. One should then begin noting as wishing to change, wishing to change. If the arm rises, note as rising, rising. If it moves, note as moving, moving. This change should be made gently and noted as rising, rising, moving, moving, touching, touching. If the body sways, swaying, swaying. If the foot rises, rising, rising. If it moves, moving, moving. If it drops, dropping, dropping. If there is no change, but only static rest, go back to noting the rising and falling of the abdomen. There must be no intermission in between, only contiguity between a preceding act of noting and a succeeding act, between a preceding samadhi, state of concentration, and a succeeding one. Only then will there be successive and ascending stages of maturity in the yogi's state of intelligence. Magga and Palanyana, knowledge of the path and its fruit, are attained only when there is this kind of gathering momentum. The meditative process is like that of producing fire by energetically and unremittingly rubbing two sticks of wood together so as to attain the necessary intensity of heat when the flame arises. In the same way, the noting in Vipassana meditation should be continual and unremitting. Without any resting interval between acts of noting, whatever phenomena may arise, for instance, if a sensation of itchiness intervenes and the yogi desires to scratch because it is hard to bear, both the sensation 
and the desire to get rid of it should be noted without immediately getting rid of the sensation by scratching. If one goes on perseveringly noting thus, the itchiness generally disappears, in which case one reverts to noting the rising and falling of the abdomen. If the itchiness does not in fact disappear, one has of course to eliminate it by scratching. But first, the desire to do so should be noted. All the movements involved in the process of eliminating this sensation should be noted, especially the touching, pulling and pushing and scratching movements with an eventual reversion to noting the rising and falling of the abdomen. Every time you make a change of posture, you begin with noting your intention or desire to make the change, and go on to noting every movement closely, such as rising from the sitting posture, raising the arm, moving and stretching it. You should make the change at the same time as noting the movements involved. As your body sways forward, note it. As you rise, the body becomes light and rises. Concentrating your mind on this, you should gently note as rising, rising. The yogi should behave as if he were a weak invalid. People in normal health rise easily and quickly or abruptly. Not so with feeble invalids who do so slowly and gently. The same is the case with people suffering from backache who rise gently lest the back hurt and cause pain. So also with meditating yogis. They have to take their changes of posture gradually and gently. Only then will mindfulness, concentration and insight be good. Begin therefore with gentle and gradual movements. When rising, the yogi must do so gently like an invalid, at the same time noting as rising, rising. Not only this, though the eye sees, the yogi must act as if he does not see. Similarly, when the ear hears, while meditating, the yogi's concern is only to note. What he sees and hears are not his concern. So whatever strange or striking things he may see or hear, he must behave as if he does not see or hear them, merely noting carefully. When making bodily movements, the yogi should do so gradually, as if he were a weak invalid, gently moving the arms and legs, bending or stretching them, bending down the head and bringing it up. All these movements should be made gently. When rising from the sitting posture, he should do so gradually, noting as rising, rising. When straightening up and standing, note as standing, standing. When looking here and there, note as looking, seeing. When walking, note the steps, whether they are taken with the right or the left foot. You must be aware of all the successive movements involved, from the raising of the foot to the dropping of it. Note each step taken 
with the right foot or the left foot. This is the manner of noting when one walks fast. It will be enough if you note thus when walking fast and walking some distance. When walking slowly or doing the Chankama walk, walking up and down, three movements should be noted in each step. When the foot is raised, when it is pushed forward and when it is dropped, begin with noting the raising and dropping movements. One must be properly aware of the raising of the foot. Similarly, when the foot is dropped, one should be properly aware of the heavy falling of the foot. One must walk, noting as raising, dropping, raising, dropping, with each step. This noting will become easier after about two days. Then go on to noting the three movements as described above as raising, pushing forward, dropping, raising, pushing forward, dropping. In the beginning it will be suffice to note one or two movements only, thus right step, left step, when walking fast and raising, dropping, when walking slowly. If when walking thus you want to sit down, note as wanting to sit down, wanting to sit down, when actually sitting down, note concentratedly the heavy falling of your body. When you are seated, Note the movements involved in arranging your legs and arms. When there are no such movements, but just a stillness, static rest of the body, note the rising and falling of the abdomen. While noting thus, and if stiffness of your limbs and sensation of heat in any part of your body arise, go on to note then, then back to rising, falling. While noting thus, and if a desire to lie down arises, note it, and the movements of your legs and arms as you lie down. The raising of the arm, the moving of it, the resting of the elbow on the floor, the swaying of the body, the stretching of the legs, the listing of the body as one slowly prepares to lie down, all these movements should be noted. To note as you lie down thus is important. In the course of this movement, that is, lying down, you can gain a distinctive knowledge, that is, maganyana and palanyana the knowledge of the path and its fruition. When samadhi, concentration, and jnana, insight, are strong, the distinctive knowledge can come at any moment. It can come in a single bend of the arm or in a single stretch of the arm. Thus it was that the venerable Ananda became an arahat, the Venerable Ananda was trying strenuously to attain arahatship overnight on the eve of the first Buddhist council. He was practicing the whole night the form of vipassana meditation known as kaya gottasati, noting his steps, right and left, raising, pushing, forward, and dropping of the feet, noting happening by happening, the mental desire to walk and the physical movement involved in walking. Although this went on till it was nearly dawn, he had not yet succeeded in attaining arahatship. 
realizing that he had practiced the walking meditation to excess and that in order to balance samadhi, concentration and virya effort he should practice meditation in a lying posture for a while he entered his chamber he sat on the couch and then lay himself down while doing so and noting lying, lying he attained arahatship in an instant the venerable Ananda was only a sotapanna that is a stream winner or one who has attained the first path on the path to Nibbana before he thus lay himself down from sotapanna he continued to meditate and reached sakkadagamihood that is the condition of the once returner or one who has attained the second stage on the path anagamihood that is the state of the non-returner or one who has attained the third stage on the path and arahatship that is the condition of the noble one who has attained the last stage on the path reaching these three successive stages of the higher path took only a little while just think of this example of the venerable Ananda's attainment of arahatship such attainment can come at any moment and need not take long that is why the yogi should note with diligence all the time he should not relax in his noting thinking this little lapse should not matter much all movements involved in lying down and arranging the arms and legs should be carefully and unremittingly noted if there is no movement but only stillness of the body go back to the noting of the rising and falling of the abdomen even when it is getting late and time for sleep the yogi should not go to sleep yet dropping his noting a really serious and energetic yogi should practice mindfulness as if he were foregoing his sleep altogether he should go on meditating till he falls asleep if the meditation is good and has the upper hand he will not fall asleep if on the other hand drowsiness has the upper hand he will fall asleep when he feels sleepy he should note as sleepy sleepy if his eyelids droop drooping drooping if they become heavy or leaden heavy heavy if the eyes become smarting 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 noting thus the drowsiness may pass and the eyes become clear again the yogi should then note as clear clear and go on to note the rising and falling of the abdomen however perseveringly the yogi may go on meditating if real drowsiness intervenes 